Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today we're going to pimp the heck out of the EK Archery Adder. <laughs> so in the end it will be much like this, fully maxed out. <laughs> we'll start from here. This is how it's going to show up if you order one. Like 11,000 other people have done just in 2020. <laughs> so it's probably the most successful crossbow of the year. And we will do a total of six modifications, some of them to the crossbow itself and others just uh, to get better bolts that are more effective. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to convert the automatic safety that automatically engages and has to be disengaged every time after you repeat it. We're going to convert this into a manual safety that will in default be off. And if you want the safety to be on, then you have to slide the catch here. Second, we're going to change the power of the limb because the regular limb comes with at 130 pounds and we today want to uh, get it to a series 180 pounds which is far away from the maximum you can actually get this to up to 260 pounds but then it's very hard to cock and also then you need to uh, reinforce a lot of the other parts which is a more complicated modification so this time we'll just be happy with 180. Also what we will do is we will reduce the sideways play of the cocking lever so that in the end it is just like this one here which means that actually you cannot really go wrong it will always hit uh, this here so uh, sideways play is an issue that a lot of people complain about and I'll show you today how to easily fix that and then also I will show you how to install the new 7-shot magazine with the quick loader functionality um, that you can exclusively get from GoGun then we'll have two changes with the bolts. This is an original bolt, it's been used slightly. And I will show you how to make it more heavy, which is important if you go up in the draw weight, because a heavier draw actually requires a heavier bolt too to uh, get the best out of it and also to avoid damage to the uh, entire system. So, so this I will show you. And also I will show you how to turn this bolt here into a bolt with the hunting broad head. There's different tips that you can mount to it, but I'll show you how to do, the, how to do that conversion. This is another pimped version, but uh, it was done a little bit different. In this case, I even put the 260 pound bow limb on it, which is actually double the power of the original one, uh, which is now scaringly powerful. Uh, but that, of course, also required that I completely changed the transport lever and also completely modified the cocking lever so that the mechanism can cope with that enormous amount of draw. Cut myself on the unboxing. <laughs> okay, what do we have here? We have the main body of the crossbow, we have the 5-shot original magazine with the thumb screw that you need for it. Um, we have the rear stock that is optional, you don't have to use it. We have five bolts. We have the front handle, we have an alternative back plate, uh, we have the red dot side together with the battery, the allen key and the cleaning wet, we have the shoulder belt, we have the original 130 pound bow limp together with a string already in place, we have the safety glasses, we have a little bit of string wax, uh, we have um, reserve end caps and we also have a second reserve string together with the help string that makes it easy to exchange them. Before we will assemble it, we will first disassemble it and do the first modification. And that modification means we're converting the safety here. So here is one of the system trigger blocks uh, that's already disassembled. So when the string, now represented with this uh, Allen key here, comes back, it will move back on the trigger and then automatically push the safety back. Huh? So it will come like so and automatically uh, then engage the safety. So this means that every time you cock it the safety will automatically be in place and you cannot shoot unless you move it forward then you can fire. Now if you want to get rid of that feature all you have to do is you have to remove this little part here. This little part that actually uh, makes the string automatically shifting back the safety. So if you remove it then the safety will be converted to manual. Very easy. Now there's two ways to do it. The dirty way, this means you just, you know, maybe take some rubber and get this out of the way and then use a file or a drill or whatever to remove this piece. 
But then of course you've got lots of metal bits inside of the system and so on. It's, it's not recommended to do it. The proper way is to disassemble the crossbow and remove it the proper way. To get this out, what you have to do is you have to remove these three screws on both sides. So a total of six screws so that you can take out the entire uh, system block here together with the trigger everything and you can do that by using the three millimeter allen key that is provided with the crossbow so this is done now and actually what you get is you get four long screws those belong to the rear position and two short screws on those have to go in here don't exchange them because otherwise the system will block so to slide out the entire pistol grip part what you have to do is you first have to unlock the lever you push it up slightly and then you you push this lever back so that you can open it. You don't have to open it all the way. And what you can now do is you can spread these parts a little bit and then the pistol grip will easily slide out. Like so. Next we take the system block out and that is also really easy. What you have to do is you spread this a little bit further so that you can take this entire part out like so. Next we're going to separate the system block from the transport lever which is this piece here and this is done by removing this axis which is not even pressed in so don't lose it it's going to come out really easily okay okay the next thing that we have to do is we have to open the system lock which really you can see it's, it's separated here so you have a wider and a smaller part which is really only a drop a front plate now, if you want to do this, you've got to remove one of these screws that um, actually hold, the, hold the, uh, the rail here in place. And you only have to do this with this one here. So, in shooting direction, the right one. Um, be a little bit careful because it's really, really tight and it's actually glued in piece a little bit. But this has to come off first. This is the only part where you actually need your own tools because none of the provided keys um, fits in this here. It's actually a 564 um, Allen key. And I just use my old RCBS tool here. Now you have to open these three screws here. This here, this here, and this one here. And actually we're going to take the same 564 Allen key for it. So the screws are now out of the way. And now I can gently lift the front up and I'll do this by using like a screwdriver and I go in here and, and then uh, lever, you know, just use it as a lever and push it up a little bit. So now we can see the parts. As you see it's a clever little lock. And this is the safety part and this we now have to remove but be very careful because underneath here there is a spring and a very small steel ball that is absolutely necessary for functionality don't lose it <laughs> don't lose it because otherwise your safety won't really hold back or forth it will just you know move freely So, here you can see the little ball. And we have to cut off this little part here. Just this one, nothing else. And this is how it's now supposed to look like. And now I'll put back this part in place. Uh, and then I'm finished with the conversion and only have to reassemble everything. So, okay, wunderbar, great. Alright, so we're finished. 
Now let's see if this works. We go back and as you see it did not shift the safety back and if I fire, eh, kind of hard. See the, the shot still falls. Yeah and when I don't want to do this then I can simply switch the safety back and then the shot cannot fall and I cannot pull the trigger. It's blocked. We've now completed the first modification. Now let's move on to the second and that is to reduce the play of the lever because we have disassembled it already. Um, so this means this is caused by this little joint here. So if you look closely you can see that this is just a U profile which is just kind of a you know there's just one axis in here. This is the little axis here and this means that it can actually it will allow for a certain amount of play. It's not too bad but it's definitely something that can be enhanced simply by reducing the play of the axis and also by filling that part of the U profile with something solid. And we'll need a four millimeter Allen key for this. What I usually do is I put in a little bit aluminum. It's actually an eight millimeter piece that I'm going to need. I put it in like so, just a little piece of it so that it's filled out so I can re-drill the axis hole and I can do this precisely five millimeters in diameter so that the axis won't have any play. And I'm going to use this uh, this eight millimeter aluminum plate that I bought on eBay. Where else? So just put it in here and then mark it on and then saw it out. So this is how it's now supposed to look like. As you see it's flush and it's massive and now it's ready to be drilled. And now you will see that the axis has almost no play anymore. And if it still does then you used a drill bit that is too thick. <laughs> now if I want to I can now use a little bit of uh, black paint to make it looking nicer, but it's not a it's 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 not a must. Okay. Now by the way, since we have to wait for the paint to dry, <laughs> a few remarks about this mechanism. Now this is the transport lever. The transport lever is actually good enough for up to 180 pounds. If you increase the draw weight ahead of uh, 180 pounds, you need to reinforce this. And you can do this by simply mounting another piece of steel against it and reinforcing it. Or like what I've done is I used a thick piece of flat steel and replaced the entire lever. Uh, so it's possible to do that. But of course it must be uh, just movable inside of this thing here quite a distance. Um, and also if you go ahead of let's say 220 pounds draw weight what you have to do is what we've done here you basically have to do to the entire lever because then the lever will actually start to bend because the force is too great and the only way how to get rid of this is to do this and in this case I would also recommend not using aluminum like here at the top but to use steel. It's not so easy because you still have to put in the joint here for this but you can do it. When we reassemble you will notice that this is much harder to be put in. That is because the U-profile will not swing in anymore. It's now massive and this definitely helps. So now you will already feel that this is completely different. This almost has no more play and it's, it's much more precise motion. 
And now we'll reassemble everything and we're starting by putting the lever here up through the parts of the body again and then uh, attach the axis and then we go exactly the oppo opposite way compared to when we were disassembling it. So I'm basically back to where I started, with the exception that I now have a manual safety, no longer an automatic safety, plus also what I have is I have a lever here that is much less prone to be uh, missing the uh, locking hole here. Now let's look at the throwing arm. This is the 130 pound throwing arm that comes with it and it is plenty powerful. Actually a lot of people go for a weaker one for practicing because then it won't tire you out so quickly and also it's not going to sink the bolts all the way into your artery mat so that the veins suffer. Also you can see that there's a little warning label on here basically telling you to wax the string frequently and also to inspect the bolts before you reuse them which is the number one problem that people do. They use broken bolts or they don't wax the string often enough so it actually uh, unravels quickly. So, but still we need to remove this. <laughs> now a lot of people want more power than this and um, the beauty of this system is that it's so easily exchangeable so you can do that at any time. You can go back to the 90 pound version which is weaker, there's a 110 pound version, but you can also actually go ahead of this simply by combining the power of two independent throwing arms. The maximum is to use two of these, uh, you know, one behind the other. If you do that, then you will actually have doubled the energy level and everything will be twice as hard, including the cocking. <laughs> uh, but uh, a lot of people won't be uh, handling this and also um, this also will definitely require more changes to the weapon. So today we're going to add two 90 pound uh, limbs, which are the least expensive and weakest ones you can get. So for this conversion I got myself two of the replacement 90 pound throwing arms and uh, I'll open this one already and as you see yes they cost some money but keep in mind you also get a spare set of uh, end caps and also a replacement string with it which always comes in handy on a repeating weapon and um, we first have to disassemble them like all of them get this take the string of all of them so that we can work on them. Fortunately, it's super easy to do that. Simply what you do, you first install the throwing arm into the system and you do this by pushing out this little bolt here. You, it can't fall out, it's like AR-16 style. And then you put in the throwing arm, push down on it a little bit and then push the bolt here all the way in again, like so. Now you take the help string that comes with it and actually you slide this over it into this second position, this here, and you do the same on the other side. And as you see now you have a string with a lot of slack. That's the trick. Because now we're simply going to cock the weapon but we don't go all the way, but we just go back here and then we can take the string out because there will be play in it. So. And now I can simply relax the string again by reversing the cocking motion. Next, simply remove the end caps and they are just, just put on there, no glue, very easy. Next, we will have to remove the uh, throwing arms from the front end parts and we do this with the supplied uh, 3mm Allen key. Simply loosen it like so. Don't have to remove the screw all the way. Then you can, you can slip them out sideways. 
make sure that the little uh, plastic and metal parts that are in there are not getting lost. So now what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two and uh, what we will do is we have to shorten the rear one quite a bit so that I can put the end cap on the front one. And what we're also going to do is we're going to then attach the ends with a little bit of string. I'm using bowstring here. Um, and um, the only thing that you have to do or that you should do, you have these two markings for where the center is. And since we're not going to see this after one is stacked behind the other, we take the rear one and file in these little grooves so that we can see it from the top. So it's easier to center them later on. I recommend cutting off around 4.2 centimeters from the rear throwing arm. Now I recommend filing in grooves from the rear part for the string so that it actually has something to hold. And you of course do this a little bit behind the original opening. Also what we're going to do is we're going to file in something like here so that the string later on will glide through without uh, kind of chafing against the back side of this. So now we can slip these back inside and of course um, now the plastic parts, the two plastic little washers we have to leave out but we have to install the metal one. This is absolutely necessary. It comes into the front so that the screw won't damage the front of the throwing arms. If you want to avoid that people see the uh, kind of plastic look here at the end where we filed in the grooves, now is the time to paint it. <laughs> Now the paint is dry. <laughs> now we put this into the string stopper part and we put the metal plate in between, like so. And then we tighten the whole screw again. This would work fine now, but we're not there yet because what we want to do is so that these won't go out of alignment, we'll tie them together. And I'm doing this with a little bit of Dacron that is actually string material for bow strings and so on because there's almost no slip and it also is very, very sturdy. So as we can now see, this is firmly together and cannot go out of alignment anymore. Yet there is play between these two. And now we can put the end caps back on. Now it is important to make sure that you first put the loops through the ears of the help string before you attach them to the end of the caps. Very, very important. Otherwise you won't get the string off again. Okay, then the old trick again. Push against it, unrelease it and then swing it by front. Now would be the time to mount the magazine. This is the original five shot magazine. However, we're going to use the new model that you can only get at GoGun that is completely redesigned. Well, this is just made from all plastics and it has the disadvantage that this arm that you need to lift up to load it cannot be pulled up any further than this. Therefore, you can't really easily access 
the loading bay and it's so much easier if you can swing it up all the way but that requires a far more complicated magazine. Here you can see the two magazines in comparison. As you see the height is almost entirely the same um, but this one holds uh, more bolts and also as you see it's made from machined aluminum. It's just far more advanced. <laughs> and also this one you can lift up the entire lever like so. As you see there's a steel ball that actually locks it in place and this has an individual spring. So therefore now you have free access and can easily fill this and even using the speed loads for doing this. And if you want to close it again you simply push on this lever and then the steel balls lock in the other position. Far more advanced. Uh, mounting the magazine is super easy. You simply put it on here over this and then you slide it back and then you put in the thumb screw and you're all set. Now we can mount the rear shaft, therefore we push out the rear rod, put it in, snap it in place and then we have our adjustable rear stock. Now I've mounted the red dot side and of course if you want to you can also now mount the laser light uh, system. The holder comes with the system and um, but that's up to you. Uh, loading the arrows in is now very simple. You could either simply swing up um, the loading bay here and then dropping in the arrows one by one or you can take the speed loader and do it all kind of automatically. Clack. <laughs> okay then let's see how hard it is to cock first time <laughs> and shoot it against short distance archery mat here. So still is very much under control. Not so bad. Bang. It's hard hitting. Very cool to see the tension in this thing, right? Keine Sicherung mehr. No more safety. <laughs> What is really nice is that we only have permanently altered the rear 90 pound one. The front 90 pound one is completely unchanged and the 130 pound one as well. So therefore it is really not an issue um, to go back to 90 pounds or to 130 pounds since this is all non-destructible except the rear 90 pound one. So now to the part how to make heavier arrows. Now the problem is that these arrows are actually a very good match for the original 130 pound bow but if you go up to 180 or even higher you want more oomph. You want more weight and it's also much better for the weapon itself because otherwise the string is going to hit the string stoppers really hard. Uh, so uh, heavier bolts means that there's less energy left over after the uh, bolt is on flight and therefore it's better for the equipment. What you need for this is, is obviously an original bolt. <laughs> You're also going to need six millimeter nails, could be five and a half millimeters, it doesn't, it's not so important. You need some wooden dowels and those should be anything between five and six millimeter. I use like shashlik pins that you can buy in a supermarket. The thicker type works better but it doesn't really matter so much. What you also need is a heat gun, absolutely necessary otherwise you won't get the tips out of the um, original bolts again. To get the tip out what we do is we heat up the carbon arrow shaft here very carefully and then once we think that it's hot enough we put it in the vise 
and clamp it in here in the tip and then we pull but never like you know wiggle it sideways always pull very straight because otherwise you're going to destroy the carbon fiber arrow when it's so hot it's very vulnerable sometimes you uh, will lose a tip simply because it's coming off after several shots or so on and disappears forever in the archery mat in this case it's very easy you take one of these bolts and take a new tip and a new insert Now you put the tip into the drill and take a file and remove the old glue. The tip now must go in and out into the cooled shaft very easily. And if that's not the case, take a 16mm drill bit and clean out the old glue. Now we have to cut off a piece of the 6mm nail and I recommend using about 40mm for centimeter. This piece now weighs about 9 grams. Uh, if you add a little bit of wood, then uh, I think the total would be about 10 grams. So we're turning a 13 gram bolt into like a 22, 23 gram bolt, which is much better for the new draw force. Now we have to cut the wooden piece to length. And what we do is we first throw in the metal piece, then we put in our wood and we mark the length, like so. And now what we do is we put the tip against it and line it up and then we mark where the thing needs to be cut so that we can put in the insert without any loss. Now we put in the wooden piece first, then comes the steel piece and then comes our tip. And when we press everything together there should be no rattling. Then we can glue it back. Next and last on our tuning list for today is hunting broadheads. The good news is you no longer have to do this by yourself because now Steambow has decided to manufacture them for us. And as you can see they are really cool, very sharp, very solid and nice. But, 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 what if you also want those to be heavier? What if you want a different type? And there are really cool broadheads on the market like these Steambow wolf fangs. So this is an entire different caliber, <laughs> much more brutal. But there are also types like these here, the um, uh, 2D Botkins. And as you can see, those are very, very pointy and also stackable. So you can do these as well. So today's task is to make one of these that actually fit in the magazine together with the uh, Wolf Fang tip. But we also want it to weigh at least 22 grams, maybe even more. So therefore we have to go through the same routine as before, only the, the length is different. So the first thing that we do is we mark the new length of the arrow shaft. So we put these here tip to tip. Okay, like so. And then we mark exactly the end where the insert begins. Like so. And now we put in the wood and the steel just as before. So now it's time to glue this on. But in order to make sure that we can really align the flights of the vein with the blades, they really need to be on the same plane. Um, we're going to use CA glue that doesn't harden immediately, but takes about 10 seconds. Um, you can get these glues very inexpensively and um, it's much better. So this is the end result. We now have a really heavy broadhead bolt. Beautiful and great for our new power. Now the wolf fangs are a little bit too wide, therefore I had to grind off a little bit of the edge here, but now they're perfect. So it's now fully souped up and tuned. 
There's a few more things you, you can do, but those were the most popular when I did a poll in the Facebook group, which I totally recommend. It already has more than 1,200 members. Great place to be and to hang out with other era lovers. Um, and uh, well, in any case, I'm, I'm probably going to do a comparison in terms of energy tomorrow, hopefully when the rain will have stopped uh, with the 130 pound one and um, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I hope that you like this because that's it for today. <laughs> Thanks and bye bye. <laughs>